me llamaron y me dijeron que me iban a hacer profesional y que tenía que afirmar. Y la verdad que es un, una alegría enorme. But not all were convinced of Messi's ability. I had lunch with, uh, with Rijkaard. I told him, like, I saw that boy Messi, but he didn't really impress me. But I think you saw the quality, some flashes, but he needs to play a little bit more like this. I said, uh, I was discussing that with Frank, and Frank told me, like, his instincts are incredible, I, he said, because I saw that uh, in, the, in the training, and he can do things that nobody can, he said to, to me. So uh, we mustn't put too much uh, things in his mind, just let him go. And I must say, Frank saw it. Quite well, I must say. <laughs> Fue él quien que me dio la oportunidad de debutar con el Barcelona, que me dio su confianza cuando yo tenía 16 y 17 años. Eh, el quien apostó por mí, que me dio todo y creo que gracias a él conseguí todo lo que lo que conseguí. Estoy muy agradecido por eso. And young Leo was quick to show the Dutchman his gratitude. When he's made his scoring debut here at the Camp Nou. It was against a team called Albacete. There was no time left when he was brought on as a substitute, perhaps about three minutes. Instantly made an impact, made a chance. Then Ronaldinho, the guy who ruled, the world player of the year, just an extraordinary talent, already knew Messi was a genius. And instead of hogging the ball, gave it to him with a lovely pass. First touch, Messi volleys it over the keeper. Goal. The linesman puts up his flag completely wrongly and rules out this gorgeous debut goal. What did it take him? About another 90 seconds when Ronaldinho picks the ball up again, flicks it to him, and in the identical position, Leo Messi, fully onside this time, chips the keeper again, and the stadium goes absolutely wild. It was amazing because he was 17, and the degree of uh, maturity that he shown on touching the ball, you know, above the, the goalkeeper once, not first, he was offside. But then secondly, he did it again. It was amazing, not that this means... Uh, Amazing quality, you know, on his feet, but also amazing uh, character, no, and self-confidence. Messi began to make an impact domestically and scored his first Champions League goal against Panathinaikos. Then, when Barcelona were drawn against Chelsea in the Champions League in 2006, the British public would get its first opportunity to see this special talent in action. Messi helped run the game. Ronaldinho was in his pomp. Eto scored a great goal. But if you look at the youth and still the physical slightness of that boy, this was an announcement that an enormous footballer was born on the world stage. It happened to be in Britain. It was a, it was a huge introduction to British fans about Leo Messi's talent. But it wasn't just opening the curtain and saying, here's a potential star. That was him stamping on the floor of the stage and saying, get ready, this is my territory now. Can Messi torment and tease Chelsea as he did a fortnight ago? Messi's influence in the return leg was cut short, however. He came off injured after just 25 minutes. Well, this is not too good for Lionel Messi. Well, so much was said about Messi after the first game, and he's going to play very little part in this second game. Barca would get the better of Chelsea and eventually progress to the Champions League final against Arsenal. Messi faced a race against time to be fit. Hola, soy Lionel Messi y juego para este Barcelona que se prepara para la gran final. Messi is out for months, but makes it back, is fit and is in full training ahead of Paris. Jugar la final, siempre jugar la final es lindo, más en, en esta competición que después del Mundial creo que, que una de las más lindas o si no la más linda de, de todos los torneos que hay y sería algo, algo muy bueno jugarla y, y poder ganar obviamente. Trains on the Sunday at the Camp Nou, flies with the squad, trains on the Monday in Paris, trains on the Tuesday in Paris and he thinks he's in the team. He doesn't make the squad. Hoy en día me doy cuenta de que de que esa final tendría que haber disfrutado mucho más de lo que de que lo disfruté por por el momento que fue, que creo que que hay muchos jugadores que no tienen la oportunidad de de poder ganar la Champions, yo estaba ahí es algo muy especial. Barcelona are back on top of European football and they may just take some shifting. At the end of the game, he's told by all the non-playing subs and the team to come down and celebrate on the pitch with the cup. He refuses, doesn't want to touch the cup, doesn't want to join in. Messi was devastated. I was with him uh, at night and, uh, and he felt that he had the space in the lineup and he couldn't make it and the inability to be with the 
teammates, you know, winning that uh, championship maybe gave him a, a bitter uh, taste. Messi missed out on the Champions League party in Paris, but the 2006 World Cup was the perfect stage for him to bounce back. He would score what is still his only goal in a World Cup, and his impressive performances would see calls for him to be involved in games from the start. I want to see Messi, but Peckerman don't think the same. <laughs> Manager Jose Peckerman wouldn't hear any of it, and against Germany in the quarter-final, he decided against bringing Messi on at all, whilst the team were leading. Argentina now have used up all three of their substitutes, they haven't used Messi. Peckerman made a very bad decision, um, decided not to use Messi in a game where his talents would have stretched the game, made the Germans play deeper. Malak's ball in, on by Borowski, and in! Germany would equalise and force the game to a shootout. And we all know what happens when Germany and penalties are involved. Cambiasso must score, and Lehmann has carried Germany through! The next season, Messi would show his country exactly what they were missing out on with a virtuoso display against rivals Real Madrid. Somehow that night, Messi went, this is my moment. Ronaldinho leads the charge. Eto, Ronaldinho, stopped by Casillas, blasted in by Messi! That's what Lionel Messi has in mind. Messi takes everybody on, Messi has got it! It was a classical, he'd saved the honour of Barcelona, he'd scored the first hat-trick for Barcelona against Real Madrid since Romario some 15 years previously. It was, an extraordinary night. This is the game that is going to be remembered as the Lionel Messi match. 19 years of age, he gets a hat-trick. They compared him to Diego Maradona, as they do many Argentinians when they come over here. But he is living up to that billing. The hype surrounding this mesmeric talent wasn't a new thing for Messi to deal with. Since his childhood, he was well used to comparisons with the great Diego Maradona. Que era... Un orgullo para mí escuchar eso, pero que, que creía que yo recién comenzaba, que digo hay uno solo, uno va a ver otro, y yo intento de hacer mi camino y de, de seguir creciendo con mi gente. And just when he thought those comparisons may have subsided, this. Messi consigue el recorte ante Paredes, aguantando con el balón, seguido también de Nacho. Messi llega hasta Alexis, continúa con el balón dentro del área, el recorte, la pelota que se va a perder fuera, golazo de Messi. To see how similar the, the two incidents are is remarkable, really. On the halfway line, when he picks it up, that acceleration from, from nothing to over 10 yards blitzes him away from people. Quick drop of the shoulder, you know, and he's gone. And you can't catch him. You know, the streets, I'm sure, would have been full of kids trying to, to beat players and, and pretending to be... Diego and um, I'm, I'm sure Messi was no different. Those two moments are incredible. Those two guys that are, that are so similar in so many ways. To, to replicate two situations, it's weird. When he was able to ally moments like that with his tremendous consistency otherwise, you know, I think that really is what, when he entered the conversation as being the best player in the world. Messi was at it again only months later with his version of Maradona's Hand of God. Messi's been compared to Maradona since he was about 10. The fact that he scored with his hand against Espanyol was a, a bad moment. I think he'd like to rub it off his career totally. The next season, many clubs on the continent would be well aware of the damage that Messi could cause. We had been warned by our scouts and we looked at things and I thought, yeah, the, the kid's a bit special. And then I realised there's things you really cannot do nothing about. When somebody that has ability goes and takes two or three people and scores wonderful goals, you know, from being one nothing up and feeling quite good about ourselves, this guy comes along and scores two goals. But Messi's injury issues would rear their ugly head again, the final straw being when he came off crying in Barcelona's return leg against Celtic in 2008. I wasn't in tears, I can assure you, because he did it in front of me and he ran by a couple of players and, and, and 
pulled his hamstring just in front of me. And, it, and I really shouldn't be thinking that way, but I thought, thank goodness for that. We can relax just a bit, because whoever they're bringing on now is not as good as this guy. I don't care who's coming on, he's not as good as him. Back in Barca, Messi's latest injury setback didn't come as a surprise. In the background, what he didn't know, what we didn't know, was that a committee comprising Chiqui Bergerestein, the football director, Mark Ingler and Ferran Soriano, the two vice presidents, had already identified the problem and actively went to the solutions. The problem is that we never got him stabilised, no? in terms of uh, physics, always recurring injuries on the, on the muscles. We took a kind of a holistic uh, approach to his performance, so really tracking his sleep hours uh, he was taking, uh, individualised uh, stretching uh, plan and uh, restrength uh, plan uh, for him. He had to do it every day with uh, lots of discipline. So all that, that was a very integrative uh, plan to, to yield his um, maximum uh, performance. After the break, Messi! Well done, my friend. I haven't seen many players do that. It's just genius. When you talk about Messi, I won't. Hopefully I won't be anywhere near him. In 2008, Pep Guardiola was appointed Barcelona manager, replacing Frank Rijkaard after the Dutchman failed to win La Liga. Early on in his tenure, he had a crucial decision to make. One of the key moments in the entire development of this Barcelona era and the life of Leo Messi came when he was desperate to play in the Olympics and Barcelona as a club said no. Barca would have to go to the Court of Arbitration for Sport to resolve the issue with the Argentinian FA. They won the legal battle, but Guardiola, who had only just been promoted from his role as Barca's B coach, was adamant that Messi should be allowed to go to the Games after he himself had claimed gold at the 92 Olympics for Spain. Él recién estaba y, y fue la decisión de él en, en dejarme ir. Para mí fue importante después de, de todo lo que se había hablado, si iba y si no, tanto acá como, como en Argentina. Pep Guardiola certainly backed him in that, even though obviously it meant losing a, a crucial player. And losing a crucial player at a time when they had to go through uh, Champions League qualifying. What could have gone wrong? They could have been eliminated from the Champions League qualifier. Messi could have come back with an injury. Guardiola could have earned an enemy in the president. The gamble paid off. Barcelona qualified for the Champions League and Messi returned to Barcelona with the gold medal. Siempre me dice Guardiola no que yo no le tengo que dar la gracia por por eso. Fue una una decisión de él que creía que era lo lo mejor para mí. Guardiola won all his bets. He won a new friend in Messi. He showed the club that while he was their appointment, he was also the boss now. And Guardiola had already made the decision that the great Ronaldinho was surplus to requirements at Barca. Messi was to be his heir apparent. Remember that we had a team where we had already Iniesta, Xavi, Messi, plus Deco, plus Ronaldinho. But uh, maybe Ronaldinho and Deco were not at the, the best and, uh, and maybe their influence on, on Leo's you know, career development maybe wasn't the, the best. And, and we took a bold decision in that season that was trying to get rid of Ronaldinho and Deco. And together with that, uh, there was the decision to give him the number 10 to Leo. And I believe that gave him even more, more, more stance no, to his uh, potential performance. Guardiola's new look Barcelona, with Messi as its focal point in attack, would become almost unplayable. The team advanced through to a Champions League semi-final against Chelsea and after the first leg finished goalless at the Nou Camp, Chelsea looked to have worked out how to stop Barcelona and Messi. Until, that is, this happened. Messi closed out, Iniesta, heartbreaker! What a time to win a semi-final! Messi, who else, on hand with the assist.